finish off my trip to Iowa City for Iowa Football Media Day. My overall takeaways, my reaction from what I learned today inside the practice facility outside of Kinnick Stadium on the U of I campus, plus discussion with Kirk Ferentz, what we learned from his press conference, and much, much more. But first, before we get to the content for this video, I want to thank Ascent Nutrition. You may have heard me say that many coffees out there actually contain harmful mold and mycotoxin. Uh, but did you know they also contain endocrine-disrupting pesticides? Well, with Ascent Nutrition's coffee, you will get a pure, amazing taste. It's free of those contaminants. Your purchase supports this channel from the Hawkeye of the Storm and former Iowa graduate Lance Shuttler. Visit GoAscentNutrition.com. That's GoAscentNutrition.com. Use the code Hawkeyes at checkout. Receive 15% off your total order. Also want to thank Under the Kitchen. Great Hawkeye artwork at Under the Kitchen. Visit them, Under the Kitchen, on Facebook. So, Iowa Media Day, quite busy today. We got to speak with Kirk Ferentz. We got to speak with the Iowa assistant coaches, a number of Iowa players. University does a great job in uh, supporting Media Day, and it was an enjoyable experience. So, what did we learn today? What's, uh, what's the substance of what we got from today's um, event? First of all, the speculation about Keegan Johnson – uh, was confirmed to some extent today. However, it sounds like Keegan Johnson is going to be healthy at some point. I mean, it doesn't sound like this is going to be um, a season-long injury. I don't think the coaching staff expects that. He has been. Uh, he's not participated in camp. Um, uh, David Davidkov hasn't participated in camp. And we kind of picked up on that in some of the photo galleries from the first week of fall camp that the university had been releasing both of those guys, Kirk Ferentz confirmed, have been out. Now, Keegan Johnson did speak with the media uh, over at the practice facility uh, following Kirk's press conference. So I think Keegan's close. It sounds like, according to what Kirk said, he's working his way back. You hope he can get back full speed before the first game of the season because this wide receiver room needs him dearly. The other unfortunate part of this is Kirk Ferentz did inform the media that Deontay Vines uh, sustained a wrist injury, and he's out for a substantial part of the season. That is a blow, folks. We are talking about a room that is down Charlie Jones and Tyrone Tracy from last year. They lost Jackson Ritter to injury already. Keegan Johnson's been out a lot. Uh, we think about his abdominal problems back in January. It sounds like this might be a separate issue, not related to the abdominal problems. And now you have a situation with... Um, Deontay Vines, it sounded like it, all accounts were that he had been really progressing through fall camp so far and had been a real impact guy. And so to lose him, just just not good, not good development. So now the onus will fall on Arlen Bruce. It will fall on um, Keegan Johnson if he can get back. Certainly Nico Regani has to play his best football of his career. Um, and then Brody Brecht, he was there talking to the media as well, although I haven't seen him in um, – any practices so far don't know i'd have to look back don't really think kirk specifically addressed brody per se and i didn't get a chance to to talk to brody uh, we'll see if he's out there tomorrow at kids day inside kinnick stadium david david cobb the guy i mentioned who's also been out uh, listed as a uh, uh, backup left guard on the most recent depth chart um, he was not available for to the media so don't know the health problem that he's dealing with you hope he can come back soon because um, he is certainly a guy who could potentially be a future star along that offensive line. He's a highly touted recruit, and he got here just last spring, not this past spring, but the, the spring of 2021. Mentioned wide receiver depth. That's going to be a continued storyline as we uh, count down the days to kick off. We're at 23 days now, uh, 22, 23 days, somewhere in there, 22 days to kick off now. Um, who steps up? That's going to be just the biggest question. Could we see a Caden Wedgen step up? Could we see Alec Wick or a Jordan Come, who's an Ankeny kid who committed kind of late in the 22 cycle as a walk-on? Tight end's going to play is going to be huge with Steven Cilianos, who sounds like he's starting to get up to speed. But there's that learning curve when you transfer in from the Patriot League between him, Lachey, and Laporta. Uh, it sounds like that room is is staying healthy, which is great. They're going to need those guys um, in the passing game. Speaking of 
uh, tight ends. Addison Estringa, a guy I had been high on back in the fall. And if you've watched my channel, you heard me say that I'm I'm really high on Addison Estringa. He was not a highly touted kid from Wisconsin, but I like the physical traits. He's obviously a, a multi-sport athlete, played really good baseball player, pitcher, I believe, in uh, high school. He's a guy who physically looks the part, and Kirk Ferentz went out of his way to bring Addison Estringa up. So will Estringa play possibly – on special teams, I don't know that he's going to be able to work into the tight end fray because it is not the easiest of positions to learn as a freshman, especially one that didn't enroll early. But he, I could see him playing um, as a true freshman on special teams. I think you're going to see less and less players being redshirted with the transfer portal and whatnot. Guys just don't stick around for five years anymore, typically. Now, that's not rule, but typically they just don't. I could see a string of playing on special teams. Uh, I'll say this. I had a conversation with someone um I won't say who, but TJ Hall is going to play. Um, now, maybe he won't play right away on defense, but he is. I know the coaching staff is really high on TJ Hall. Aaron Graves, he's, you know, there's a learning curve for him from a football standpoint, but from a physicality standpoint, he's got the tools. I see him playing. We may not see him really develop into a guy who can play even, you know, 15 snaps a game until maybe midway through the season, but I think he's going to get snaps. I think he's going to see the field. I think he's too good of an athlete to not. Caleb Johnson, Jazzy, and Patterson. Kirk went out of his way to talk about those two guys. They were both available to the media. It's nice that Iowa now allows freshmen to talk, true freshmen to talk to the media. I still think we're going to see uh, Drew Stevens end up winning the kicking battle. Um, Jacob Bostic, you know, will he end up emerging at wide receiver? He's another one that they could really use, but he's a freshman coming in from the Illinois area. No change in the quarterback battle. Uh, I talked with Alex Padilla and Spencer Petrus. Both did not speak with Joey Labus. I'm not sure Labus was there. Uh, he may have been, and I, I may have missed him. But uh, nothing from Kirk or Brian on any change in the quarterback competition. And it sounds like Alex Padilla is satisfied right now. Now, do you want? I'm not saying he's satisfied with being the backup, but if he doesn't play this year, you never know. Things change. But I, I spoke with him, and he's very happy here at Iowa. Um, I expect Spencer Petrus to be the starter week one. Not saying I want that or, or I think that's the best decision. I'm not there every day. I do expect that to happen. Connor Colby, sounds like he's been playing on the outside at tackle due to some injuries at tackle, which Iowa does not need. They don't need more offensive injuries, but it sounds like maybe Plum, uh, although Plum was there talking to the media, so maybe it's Nick DeYoung, um, and, and, and maybe that's just – partly performance-based, um, but Plum and Mason Richmond were both speaking to the media. But Connor Colby, it sounds like he's been playing on the outside a bit more, which would indicate that uh, either performance is not there, or as Kirk stated, the injuries have just kind of caught up to that position. Will Colby move back inside? That's the question. If they like him outside, maybe you just keep him out there and you go with Richmond and Colby. Uh, Noah Shannon heard lots of good buzz about him, some players bringing his performance up, and we've heard that for months now. It sounds like he's really taken a step as a senior to be a really good nose tackle would not be surprised to see him take a big jump. Arlen Bruce, his name has been brought up and certainly they need him at wide receiver to step up. He and Regani, those two guys have to stay healthy with vines hurt with Brex uh, health kind of uncertain at this point. Keegan Johnson, same thing. Um, those guys specifically Regani and Bruce. I can't emphasize that enough. Those guys have to stay healthy. Remember kids day tomorrow at Kinnick stadium. It's free to get in. If you have not already gotten your, uh, plan set gates open at 11 a.m uh, practice starts at 12 p.m noon wanted to just give you my reaction my takeaways from big 10 or from excuse me from iowa media day uh, at kinnick stadium today give you my reaction after watching iowa's open kids day scrimmage tomorrow right here stick it right here from the hawkeye of the storm subscribe turn notifications on we'll talk to you soon